welcome you to our seminar on the comprehensive economic and trade agreement between EU and Canada. Uh, we are obviously very pleased to see such a great turnout for tonight's event. Almost sold out. Uh, founded in 1995, the Canadian-Croatian Chamber of Commerce is a not-for-profit network of Croati uh, Croatian-Canadian businesses and professionals that has emerged as a voice of the Croatian-Canadian business in Canada. Canada has one of the largest and most successful Croatian communities outside of Croatia, and the Canadian-Croatian Chamber of Commerce brings together businesses and professionals with strategic uh, relationships that are economic, commercial, political, and uh, cultural in both Canada and Croatia. In the last 19 years, the Chamber has grown steadily as has its influence increased exponentially within the so uh, society at large. At this time, I would like to introduce our honorary guests. I ask each of them to please stand and be recognized as I call your name. First, Ambassador of the Republic of Croatia to Canada, His Excellency, Mr. Veselko Grubišić. <laughs> Consul General of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Ljubinko Matešić. Member of Parliament for Etobicoke Centre, Mr. Ted Opitz. <laughs> Member of Parliament, Parliament for Mississauga East Cooksville, Mr. Vladislav Lizon. Professor Mladen Vranic, uh, member of Order of Canada and Order of Ontario, was supposed to be here, but I don't see him. He may be late or he missed this great opportunity. Uh, I would also like to thank our members of Canadian Croatian Chamber of Commerce, without whose enthusiasm and efforts this evening would not have been organized. And they are Linda Zugets. Ljuba Đurđević, Branko Šarčanin, and Juanita Kelava. The proposed free trade agreement between Canada and the European Union is of a great important, uh, importance to uh, both parties to this agreement. For that reason, the Canadian Croatian Chamber of Commerce has organized this seminar with the hope that it will contribute to better understanding of business opportunities which are being created by this agreement. Thank you, Gresho, Mr. President, Consul General. Here are two of my good friends, Ted and Vladislav. They are always there for Croatia whenever I need them honorable members of parliament, and um, I would like to thank them for what they are doing to Croatia. And Ted Opitz is also president of uh, Canadian-Croatian uh, Parliamentary Friendship Group. And Vladislav is a vice president, therefore they have a um, role and they are really working hard. This year, uh, almost 20 uh, members of parliament and senators visited Croatia, two ministers, Two Canadian ministers visited Croatia and two Croatian ministers visited uh, Canada. But uh, tonight I am uh, also the ambassador of the youngest uh, EU member state, the 28th one. Therefore, um, I will be talking uh, more about EU-Canada trade, their economic relations. I saw here is a formal ambassador of Canada to, to EU, and he was instrumental in, 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 in the, at the beginning of, of the comprehensive uh, trade agreement. Therefore, the full name of it is uh, uh, the comprehensive, comprehensive economic and trade agreement between European Union and Canada. Maybe if you ask Canadian, they would start between Canada and the European Union. Next slide, please. Well, if you can just um, uh, bear with me for a second, you know everything about Canada, 10 provinces, three territories, two official languages, 35 million inhabitants, almost 10 million square kilometers, and a very high GDP per capita. But for the EU, Canada is relatively small, but very rich market. 
if you see, if you look at the European Union, 28 member states, 28, 34 official languages, including uh, Croatian, and uh, one of the language that is spoken, but it's a small language, is also Irish, Gelga. Therefore, that was the 23rd uh, language before Croatian came into. It ha uh, therefore, um, European Union has uh, 500 million inhabitants, uh, four and a half billion square kilometers. As you can see, it's uh, smaller than half of the Canada. <laughs> Um, GDP per capita is 34, every GDP per capita is 34 thousand uh, dollars. Unfortunately, Croatia is far below. And not uh, the lowest in the EU, Bulgaria is uh, still the lowest. Uh, Luxembourg has very high income, Germany is, but Germany is, uh, is lower, Ger German's income per capita is lower than, than Canadian. And then, as you can see, EU is a vast integrated market. Its annual import alone are worth more than Canada's GDP. Next slide, please. Um, this is President Barroso. When I now, as ambassador of Croatia, I have to also say President Barroso. And this is what, what he said. This is very important. We must also pursue our active and assertive trade agenda. It is about linking us closer to growing third markets and guaranteeing our place in the global supply chain. As, it, as you can see uh, at the end, he said, these two will demand our full attention in the month to come, notably with the transatlantic trade and investor partnership with the US and negotiations with Canada and Japan. This was uh, September, just a month before the deal was struck between uh, Prime Minister Harper and uh, President Barroso. Next slide, please. But it would be important that Canadian CETA is uh, done uh, before one with the US. Um, okay. As you can see, 15% of the world trade in goods. This, this does not include services, uh, EU does. And then it's the largest importer. As you can see, EU imports more than 2,000 billion euros per year, each year. Therefore, there is a huge opportunity for everybody. Uh, also, it's a first exporter. Uh, this, uh, when this was done in 2012, Croatia was not yet a member. Therefore, it's not calculated, but uh, the amount would be not uh, significantly larger. Next slide, please. Therefore, EU trade and investment policy, basic features are being the leading trade region, wants, uh, has a strong interest in open markets, clear regulatory frameworks, uh, responsibility towards its own citizens, EU citizens, the responsibility to the rest of the world, and need to reinforce EU competitiveness on. Go to Croatia, especially now, in two years time, this is going to be in force. We have a lots of incentives currently in Croatia. When you start new companies, when you employ uh, new people, and there, if you are going to produce something, there, is also, there are also incentives in the EU. And uh, not only that now, the economic diplomacy in Croatia, we have traffic lights. Therefore, if I do not answer to your question, or if somebody in Croatia doesn't answer to the question, it's going to be yellow and then red, and then his boss is going to ask him, why didn't you answer? Actually, I hope nobody is going there for now. I know a lot of people tried, and uh, some succeeded, some didn't. But this is a different climate now, and I encourage you, whatever you have, contact the embassy, and I and my collaborators and consul general here and his people will try to help you the best we can. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speakers are uh, Mr. Ted Opitz and Mr. Ladislav Lizo. Uh, both of them were elected in 2011 and are members of parliament. Uh, Mr. Opitz and Mr. Lizo are chair and co-chair of the Canada-Croatia Parliamentary Friendship Group. Please welcome them. Thank you very much.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for welcoming us here today. This is a great honor to be here. An ambassador of 149 countries with a foothold already in trade is good. And most of you know I served back in the day and I spent a little bit of time in Croatia, so I'll tell you the chocolate, the beer, the Shlibovitz and everything is very good. And we'd like to see more of that traded here. So we'll work on that. But there, there's tremendous opportunities uh, before, before both our countries with, with CEDA. And thank you for, for all of the great figures here, because that means we don't have to do it now. And, uh, and so the ambassador did all the hard work with the, with the PowerPoint presentation. But, but the numbers are, belie a lot of other things too. There's a lot of efficiencies to be had. And as we can see, Croatia is a very young EU country right now, having just got in. We can see our Polish friends are here from the, from the Polish uh, Canadian Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, and you know, that country has done well because they were an, a young EU uh, partner at one point and they've, they're, they're going to experience a tremendous amount of growth next year and, and CETA on top of that is, is just gonna help. So I'm uh, very confident that Croatia is going to be able to benefit from that. And, and why? Well, first of all, Canada is a very diverse country. We have representatives of everybody, in, in particular in terms of Europe. We have uh, members of diasporas of all European nations here. So what do we share? You know, we, we share a lot of those language capabilities. We share the understanding of the culture. Uh, we, we share values, freedom, democracy, human rights, rule of law, uh, gender equality, you know, uh, balanced justice, all of that good stuff, which, uh, which underlies in our foundations for, for good trade relationships. And, and so there's, there's a lot of opportunity to, to work back and forth, especially with Croatia. And Croatia has a lot to offer. Uh, so where where some of the efficiency is going to come because this is a very early stage of, of this uh, this agreement right now we do hope that it is provisionally ratified sooner rather than later because we can start doing business now well you know, all of the translations are done while well, all of the uh, the uh, the details are kicked out well it goes through the European Parliament and of course there is an election in May which is then going to to, to have to go through that process and then and then put it back on the agenda uh, to ratify fully and finally. So that would be helpful. But what else does Europe need from Canada? I mean, we, we're, as you know, we're developing our energy resources too. And Europe is going to need a lot of energy. We give this back and forth, but as you know, we all read the papers and we all see what we're doing in our government. And so uh, oil and gas is going to be developed. And, and Canada is, is going to be one of the leaders because we are a very large country with a relatively small population in comparison to, to much of the world. We have a capacity to grow food uh, and down the road that's going to be uh, extremely important for, for everybody. Uh, but where else does that, that, that give uh, efficiencies? Uh, the EU for Croatia itself is great for youth right now. Like a lot of the other countries that came in from the mid 90s till now, they benefited a lot by having their youth being very mobile around many of the European countries in, in Europe and being able to, to establish roots there, jobs, uh, create income which they could send back and uh, and Croatian youth now have that ability and we do hope by the way not just in Europe that cro more Croatian youth come here um, just yesterday we launched the international education strategy in Canada which is going to encourage way more uh, foreign students to come to Canada and we do hope a lot of those kids are going to be Croatian kids to be able to get that and that's also going to lead to a to a path towards citizenship through something called the Canadian experience class if you've been working here for a number of years or if you've been accredited at a Canadian university under, under certain skills and trades, you're then eligible to apply uh, for permanent residency under the Canadian experience class. Not that we want to steal your youth or, or, or all your talent, but it's, a, but it's an option and it's an opportunity for, for people to, to contribute to that. So a lot of those uh, efficiencies come back and forth, but where else can, can Croatia uh, contribute right now as well? A lot of that is in the knowledge field. Uh, you talked about robots, but we're also talking about when CETA gets ratified, or at least provisionally ratified, then Croatian companies can bid on jobs in Canada and on building contracts and all kinds of things, fairly evenly as, as any other Canadian company has. And you did talk about Tiva Excellency, where uh, you know, Tiva's in, in Croatia, Tiva's in Canada and other places, but we also have something in place called NAFTA. And those countries that have, uh, correction countries, those businesses that have strategic partnerships uh, here that can fairly trade and, and leverage NAFTA, it, that's an opportunity as well going down the road. So a lot of this has to do with innovation, entrepreneurship, and we're probably sitting in, in, in one of the flagship uh, Croatian entrepreneurial centers, thanks to John Marion. We know, all know how entrepreneurial he is and, and what he's done with his business, and, and I know that the entire community can leverage this. 
as well. You've got a lot of knowledge in this room right now. You're all sitting here because you're interested in this and you want to look forward and you want to contribute uh, to both building the bridges between Canada and Croatia as a diaspora and leveraging the opportunities that, that are coming all of our ways. It just makes us much, much stronger because what, what does trade promote? It promotes wealth, it promotes jobs, it promotes mobility, it promotes uh, knowledge exchange. And, and uh, the ambassador showed um, the, the net benefits uh, to both countries in terms of not just uh, jobs, which all of our people need because, you know, as you, most of you know, I was a soldier back in the day. You know, you have to look out several tactical bounds ahead to where you want to get to, right? Not just, not just in front of your face, but you have to look out into the distance and be able to see, you know, where we're going to put people. What strategic plan do we have to, to employ them? What strategic plan do we have to shape that? Like, for example, the issue we have in Canada right now is a lot of kids getting master's degrees, BAs, and that sort of thing. But where's the sweet spot right now? skills training, right? And, and community colleges and things like that. So there's a rethink on some of those things that are coming around, which, which all of us, whether it's in Croatia, whether it's in other European countries in Canada, have, um, have a lot to think about and a lot of, of things that we can share. Because uh, right now, there's already an opportunity for young people to go to other countries, including Canada, and we can help in that. We, uh, we can uh, help in uh, um, arranging uh, internships for people, for young people, that they can come, have an experience, get an experience, that uh, when the time comes, there will be additional help to the implementation of the trade, of the free trade agreement. And, Your Excellency, you mentioned wine. I personally think that Croatians keep their good wine there. They don't want to ship it out. <laughs> And of course, Ted mentioned that he was in, in, uh, in the area as a soldier. I, I have to admit, I haven't visited Croatia uh, since it became independent. I was there only once, a long time ago, when it was still Yugoslavia. Uh, it was 1976. I was uh, in my early, uni there was early, uh, my early university years. And I really like it, I liked it, you know, what uh, the country, I don't think it's changed. It's probably as beautiful as it was and maybe more beautiful now. Uh, and I remember besides the wine and the rakia or shiovica, there was, I don't know if, if it still exists, but there was a brandy yes. called Cesar. I don't know if it still exists or not, but it's strong. <laughs> but uh, you know what, it uh, also, the great advantage the Croatia has is ge geographical location. You can't beat that, you know. And uh, you know, countries are where they are. But uh, this is also an advantage that Croatia has, and I think they will take an advantage. Um, our last speaker tonight is Miss uh, Linda Zugets or Zugek, the founder and managing director of the Workforce Consultants, an international human resources consulting firm which provides professional services to global markets. Her expertise is focused in the area of leadership development and she has coached and trained leaders across North America, Europe and Middle East. Linda uh, has served as an invited scholar under the European Commission where she taught the masters and PhD students at the University of Bologna in Italy, which is very, very old, and the University of Coimbra in Portugal. A respected practitioner and scholar, she is frequently cited within the media, including outlets as Forbes, Fox Business, Fortune, CNN Money, and CBC News. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Krisho. I'm not really sure what to say, actually, uh, after, after all of that. Uh, but uh, I did want to thank the Canadian Creation Chamber of Commerce, of course, uh, without which we would not be here today. Uh, in addition, I wanted to thank all of you because it's because of your presence today that, uh, that we're here and uh, you are what's going to make the Canada-European Union Free Trade Agreement happen. I wanted to send a, a special thanks uh, to someone who could not be with us here today. And that is Ambassador Louise Laroque. 
And she is, for those of you who are unfamiliar, she is the Canadian ambassador to Croatia and Kosovo. And it's because of her uh, that I was actually invited. This is a photo. You might recognize the guy on the right. <laughs> Anyone guess? Anyone guess? Um, so essentially what had happened is Louise Laroque, uh, Madame Louise Laroque, actually was really excited about the program that we had put together. And we're really excited about it as well. And so I received an invitation uh, from Prime Minister Stephen Harper's office. And the invitation was to attend the viewing of the tabling of the Canada-European Union Free Trade Agreement in principle. Uh, and that was late uh, last year in October 2013. So of course we have our lovely MP Ted Opitz, who you just heard from. And in the middle you'll see the Minister of International Trade, and that is Ed Fast. And uh, you may recognize that individual to your right. Uh, I also have the technical summary here, if anyone is interested. So this is something that they were able to hand out. Uh, during that day, and uh, for those of you, uh, you know, uh, I think some of the ones who are a little bit older among the crowd uh, might need some glasses for it, <laughs> as usual. Um, but anyway, uh, it, that's here for you, and uh, we would be more than happy to provide you with extra copies. It's also available on the website. So, why are we here? And the reason I stand before you today is to let you know that you can shape the Canada-European Union Free Trade Agreement. So you may say to me, Linda, well, how am I supposed to do that? And I'm gonna share with you a little of our story. And by the way, I mean that you can shape it regardless of whether you come from government, regardless of whether you come from industry, regardless of whether you come from education, or regardless of your background you can help shape the agreement. So how did we become involved? So what I initially did is I sort of corralled my colleagues and I said, hey guys, let's get together. Let's think about the impact that the Canada-European Union Free Trade Agreement would have. So we went back and forth and through a lot of discussion, we naturally came to the conclusion that it would involve commercial and economic interests. Then we decided to think about the individual level. And by individual, I mean, I mean employees, I mean professionals, and I mean students. And we thought, uh, very similarly to what has been said today, that this could open doors for people to exchange knowledge and skills. So why will the Canada-EU Free Trade Agreement succeed? The Canada-EU Free Trade Agreement will succeed because of people. And I don't mean people that we will never see or we will never hear from. I mean people like you, I mean people like me, and I mean people like we. Once we determined it was about the people, I went back to my team and I said, okay guys, what are we gonna do? So we developed a goal. And I would suggest actually that you take this goal on as your own, revise it, adopt it, uh, whatever you like. So our goal is to determine how we can bring our skill sets and knowledge together to further the potential of the Canada-European Union Trade Agreement for positive impact on the lives of individuals and organizations. Positive impact on the lives of individuals and organizations. Isn't that what it's about? So then we thought, well, it's about the people, and we want to utilize our skills to help people. Then we thought, this is what we need to do. We need to develop people. So what is crossing the globe? Because this, from all this resulted uh, crossing the globe, and crossing the globe was born uh, from our discussions and from our need to make individuals and organizations better. Crossing the Globe is a nonprofit organization that seeks to foster leadership development and knowledge exchange between Canada and the European Union. It's a pretty tall order, isn't it? <laughs> but one which we're ready to take on. 
So then what did we do? Well, we realized it's about the people, we realized we want to develop people, and then we came to a conclusion. We realized that we needed to develop programs. Programs that would support the development of people. The thing I need to add to this is that work experience within different countries is what matters. If we're going to build those bridges and cement those ties, it's really about work experience within different countries.